What's up YouTube? Dal here from Zephyr War Games, and today I am bringing you the control build of Dark Magician being Dark Magician Dinomorphia. Now, I really, really like the new Dinomorphia cards. Frenzy and Rexroom are absolutely insane. If I'm then able to combo that with Dark Magician, which you are, you're able to end the board on well, basically big super poly fodder, but Dragoon plus a Rextrum and more. You are pushing for OTK, you are controlling your opponent's board, which is why I consider this to be the Dark Magician control version. With all of that out of the way, please smash that like button, hit that notification bell and subscribe. Any questions, put them in the comments down below, I'll be more than happy to answer them. So as you can see, I've evenly split these out with Dark Magician and Dynamorphia cards, so you know exactly what you need to get for either side. Now the Dark Magician portion is pretty straightforward. We've gone with two Dark Magician, and yes, Mac Daddy is back. We've got the one Red Eyes Black Dragon. Now the reason we are playing this ratio is because we are playing Triple Red Eyes Fusion. So in my previous build, you saw that I wasn't playing Red Eyes Fusion at all. In this one, we are maxing it out at three because it is a card that we do not actually mind seeing. You don't mind activating this, and if you do take the hit and lose to an Ash, you're then able to still continue to play as long as you have the Dynamorphia Frenzy. Because what that's then going to do is, unless your opponent has opened up Double Ash, is that will lead you from one card, which I'll show you at the end of the profile, directly into a basically skill drain, walking, talking, Dino Rex. Off the back of that as well, if you do go unopposed, a Red Eye Fusion is a one card into Dragoon, and then a Frenzy is a one card into a Kentagena plus Rextrum, which is basically going to be saying to your opponent, well, your opponents cannot activate their effects, or your monsters cannot activate the effects you control if, your attack, if their attack is less than or equal to, or more than or equal to my life points, which by the time you get Rextrum on the board is going to be 2,000 life points, and if you really, really wanted to, you can drop your life points to 1,000. Yes, it is very risky in time, but the idea will be is that you're pretty much going to skill drain your opponent, and if they can't break that board, you will guarantee to win the next turn, because you're going to have a Dragoon that will be on 3k, 4k if it's already used its negate, and then you're going to have a Rexroom on 3k and a Kentagena by that point, which will also be on 3k. We've then got, of course, Triple Magician's Rod. Arguably, you could put this at 2, and you could also put Magician's Souls at 2, um, because it's not as important. Like You're not using these to go heavy into the links. That being said, should you go the link route as well, you do have that option. The idea behind Magician Souls is it's going to be easy draw fodder by ditching off spare Red Eyes Fusion, and ditching off spare Preparation of Rites, Soul Servants, Dark Magical Circles, Pot of Prosperity. Heck, you could even ditch off Frenzies if you really, really wanted to, um, but it does give you a bit more draw power, and then it can be used as Link fodder in order to get into your Dark Selene Access Code play. We've then, of course, got the standard uh, Double Illusion of Chaos, One Soravis, and Triple Prep. Sravis is actually quite important because it means your opponent can then not target your Rextrum, which can be very, very important should you put it on an empty board um, because they might then try to imperm it or chalice it or something like that. We've then got, I've still stuck with the two Soul Servant because we are still playing Prosperity in this build. Again, what you're changing is you're changing your power cards from being the Dear Servant um, and Branded Fusion to Dynomorphia Frenzy, Dynomorphia Phoresia, uh, Red Eyes Fusion. Still with the one circle, the one called by the grave, the one eternal soul, and of course the triple part of prosperities. If you don't have prosperities, a law is your next best option. If by doing so you do put a law in, that's not the end of the world because you can banish spare Phoresias. As long as you do not open up all copies of her, you'll still be in a good place. Plus you can banish souls and rod without worrying too much because you do have that alternate wing con going through the Dynamorphias. So that's it for the Dark Magician lineup. As you can see, a very fairly balanced lineup, uh, and it is nice that you still play Red Eyes Fusion in this particular build as well. Moving on to the Dynamorphia card, you are playing Triple Phoresia. Now, this is the difficult one to kind of get to um, for the pure fact, but ideally you could play two if you wanted to. And if you don't have Phoresia, you can go very, very budget, and you can actually play the other Dynamorphia, which is when I get to him, if I have him to hand, which I probably don't. Uh, you can play the other Dynamorphia, which was a common, because ideally all we're doing it in this build is we're using it as fodder to send from the deck to the graveyard. The one bonus of Fariza is that she basically counts as six copies of your Frenzy, because when she's normal summon, she can set a Frenzy directly from the deck. So it does give you an alternative normal summon should you want to, but again, if you're going through your Red Eyes Fusion, you're probably not going to be relying on her as a normal summon option. Uh, Frenzy, for those of you who don't know, this card is insane. During your opponent's main phase, you pay half your life points to fusion summon a Dynamorphia monster from your extra deck using one monster from the extra deck and one monster from the deck. Um, 
as fusion material. When your opponent activates a card or effect, you can banish this card from the graveyard. You take no effect damage to the turn um, from your opponent's card effects. Now, there is a little loophole with uh, Masquerade, which I'll explain later on. That effect does not protect you from Masquerade because it's not a burn effect. It's more so like um, a mandatory cost that is implied to your board. Uh, but it, I'll show you later on that in the extra deck, playing the Stealthberg actually allows you to bypass that on Dynamorphia cards itself. We are then playing Hand Traps, and we're playing two Ash Blossom and two Ogres. Um, the Ogres are only in here because I wanted to tech in the End Punisher, which I'll explain at the end. You do not need to use it. If you want to make it more prominent, you play uh, Itelli. Um, if you don't, these I would probably advise being Ghost Bells, because that will then protect your Kentagena from being Ghost Belled. Now, the reason we are playing these Hand Traps is we are playing Triple Cross Out. You, both your power play cards of Dynamorphia Frenzy and Red Eyes Fusion lose to Ash Blossom. You need to protect it where at all possible, which is why you're playing Call by the Grave and Triple Cross Out Designator. You have four ways to stop that Ash Blossom if your opponent opens it up, uh, and that is why you've got to be very, very careful, which again is another reason of Pot Prosperity, because it can help you search out a Designator. So if you're holding onto a Red Eyes Fusion or you're holding onto a Frenzy, and you're like, right, okay, let's dig, you're either finding a cross-out designated to guarantee that the successful resolution of your Frenzy or your Red Eyes Fusion, or you're digging for Red Eyes Fusion and Frenzy itself. We're then playing Double Solemn Judgment because it will always be live, and sometimes in this particular control version, just being able to say no to the first card your opponent plays can be incredibly important, even though you're already saying no to their... Um, basically their effects with Rextrum, you're then able to say no to their normal summon, no to their brand fusion if they only open one, but it is quite risky because you'll pay half your life points and if they've opened up two, they get to go again. The final card is a card that I absolutely love in the Dynamorphia deck. It's called Ferret Flame. So if the combined attack of all face-up monsters your opponent controls is higher than your life points, make your opponent shuffle monsters they control into the deck so that the combined attack of all remaining monsters they control become less than or equal to your life points. So this is really, really important because Rextrum has a quick effect to make all your opponent's monsters become equal to your life points. Now, whether that is reducing their attack or increasing their attack, it evens it out to your exact life points. So if your life points are a 1,000, for example, by the time you've activated Rextrum, it will then put your opponent on a very, very big pressure pull because what it will then do to them is it will then basically say, okay, well, you need to leave the ball with only a monster that has a 1,000 attack and you're not going to be able to activate its effect anyway. So they'll then shuffle everything back in. The chances are they'll probably leave their, their strongest or most influential monster on the board, but it still clears their entire board off. If you do this before you activate Rextrum as well, they're going to have multitude of different uh, attack stats monsters. So if they've got something that's 3k, they're not going to be able to keep it. It's going to have to go back to the extra deck, which is why this card is nuts, because it also makes your opponent do it, not you, which is really, really cool. So that's it for the main deck. As you can see, again, it's a pretty balanced chunk of Dynamorphias versus, or basically the Dynamorphia with Hand Trap backup uh, versus Dark Magicians. Moving on to the edge deck, we are playing Double Dragoon and the One Dark Magicians, um, and alongside that is the Dark Magician, the Dragon Knight. Now, Dragon Knight can actually be a little bit more important in this build, and if you wanted to, you could spice in a Lord of Heavenly Prism. But what we've gone for is here is, like I said, the Red Eyes Fusion is getting into Dragoon. You've also got the ability, should you want to, um, through the side deck, you can start putting in stuff like Magicalized Fusion. Um, you're still going to be able to get through this as well. Um, so you'd be looking at stuff like Magicalized Fusion, Secrets of Dark Magic. Um, these are basically fillers at the moment. They can be easy banish fodder off of the back of Prosperity. They could be easy super poly targets. It's entirely up to you. The only Fusion monsters you have to play are Rextrum, Dragoon, Kentagena, and Stealthberg. The, the Link Monsters is then up to you if you want to, but I still think it's a very cool option because you're not playing anything that locks you into Fusion Summoning or locks you into anything specific apart from Red Eyes Fusion, so you still want to give yourself that ability to Link Summon if you want to. Now the Rextrum, like I said, has that quick effect to reduce your opponent's attack to zero, uh, not zero, sorry, to equal to your life points or increase them to the equal your life points, and your opponent cannot activate monster effects they control with attack equal to um, or more than your life points. Kentagena can pay half the life points to target and banish a Dynamorphia trap in the graveyard. Her effect then becomes that trapped graveyard. So that's how you can use Frenzy twice in one turn, because you activate Frenzy, you make Kentagena. Kentagena uh, will then be able to use her effect by banishing that to make your Rextrum. Straight away, that leaves you on 2,000 life points rather than 4,000 life points, and it really puts your opponent in a very tight bind. It does mean that Kentagena is going to be 2,000 attack, but when you activate Rextrum, she'll go up to 3,000. Um, Kentagena loses attack equal to um, 
your life points. So if you've got 4,000 life points, she's basically zero, but it's very rare that you're going to leave her like that. And then the danger that your opponent has is if they imperm this or negate her effect, she just becomes a 4k beater. We've then got two Stealth Bow. Now these are basically the cards you're going to be sending from the extra deck. Sometimes you can send a Kentagena, but there are occasions when your opponent might put a uh, Masquerade Dragon on the board that you might want to go for this first. So while your life points are 2,000 or less, you do not pay life points to activate trap cards or Dinomorphia monster effects. Now the reason this is really important is because basically it means that when you've got it on the board, um, where Masquerade would normally make you pay life points to play your traps and to play your Dinomorphia effects, you don't need to. So this is how you can then build a board using it without burning out your last 2,000 life points under Masquerade maintenance costs, then kill the Masquerade and then continue to make your plays to hopefully push the game. It also has an additional effect as well as when your opponent activates a monster effect, you can inflict damage to your opponent equal to that monster's original attack. If this card is destroyed by battle or card effect, you can special on a level 4 ally Dynamorphia from the graveyard. Uh, the, second, the second effect that I wrote, uh, read to you, the one about burning your opponent, is a quick effect as well. Then for the Link Monsters, of course, you've got your Dark Charmer, which is going to go up into your Selene. And then, of course, you've got your Axis Code pushing for game. Now, these are all very minimal, but your opponent is going to be playing a heck of a lot of Dark Monsters, um, especially if you are going to be up against the Despia matchup. Uh, you can also get a, um, basically any Dark you bring back lets you get into Selene. As long as there's three spells, either on the field or in either graveyard, that's then getting you into a five, um, five free Access Code with at least two Banishes and non-target destruction. You then got your one generic um, super poly target, and then we've got the one psychic and punisher. Uh, these are all like you can change these. You don't have to really like they're not absolute musts or anything. Uh, this one is just a little tech card, and I highly advise you picking this up um, if it hits like the ten pound mark for the pure fact that so while your life points are less than or equal to your opponent's, this synchro summon card is unaffected by your opponent's activated effects. Once per turn, you can pay a thousand life points to then target one monster you control and one card your opponent controls. Banish them. At the start of the battle phase, you can make this card gain attack equal to the difference in your life points and your opponents. Now, keep in mind as well, the way this would work is you would control your opponent with Rexstrom. You've put yourself down to a thousand life points. Now, unless they've got a card on the board that will attempt to activate its effect should Rexstrom leave, basically all you need to do is normal summon Ghost Ogre or normal summon Ash Blossom in theory, and then sync with your Rexstrom and that and go into your Psychic End Dragon. This will then allow you to use its effect to boost it up. Now, by that point, there's going to be a 7,000 life point differentiation. So you're going to be able to go straight up to 10,500 and just basically one-shot your opponent with a massive synchro. It is techy. It is something that can easily be taken out. But like I said, you're only playing these three for the Link option. You're playing these six for the Dynamorphias. You're playing these two for the Red Eyes Fusion. Everything else, the remaining four cards are entirely up to you for flex spots. Should you want them to be an Artemis, an, uh, a Unicorn, an IP Mascarina, heck, even an Underworld of the Goddess it is entirely up to you. So I'm just going to show you like a two card combo. Now this is of course using the two power play cards of the entire deck. So I don't expect them to be like, or I don't expect you guys to be like, oh, well, this isn't the most exp um, most consistent combo. It's like, yeah, you're right. But that's why we play Prosperity as well. So let's go with our two power cards. So you've got your power card for the Dark Magician. You've got the power card for your Dynamorphias. So start off by activating Red Eyes Fusion because that's going to be done during our turn. You're going to send, of course, your Dark Magician and your Red Eyes from the deck to the graveyard. And this, of course, is going to give you your beautiful, the one and only Mac Daddy. I mean, on the bright side, guys, Dragoon is not going to get banned because we don't have Vert anymore. So it means that everyone can stop abusing our boss monster. You will need one card in the hand for discard for your Dragoon just to make sure you've got that on in the game. You're then going to set your Frenzy. Now, let me zoom this out. There we go. You're going to set your Frenzy. During your opponent's main phase, you're going to activate the Frenzy, and that is going to send from your deck to the graveyard one Felizia. And then from the extra deck, you can send anything you want. You can send one of your two Kentaginas, one of your two Rexstrums, but I usually send the Stealth Bagia um, for the pure fact that this is the one you're going to want to use the least, but in specific matchups, it will come up. Now, you could go straight to Rexstrom, and Rexstrom would leave you on 2,000 life points because you'd go down to 4,000, you'd activate Rexstrom's effect, put you to 2,000. But if you really want to try and lock your opponent down and you're not scared if your opponent's stopping your Kentagena, which is what Dragoon can help protect, you actually go to Kentagena, you use her effect to target the Frenzy in the graveyard and banish it, paying 2,000 life points. This will then put you down to 2,000 life points, but what it will do is it will let you send you your second or third Phoresias from the deck to the graveyard, and then it will let you send either a second Rexstrom, a second Kentagena, or um, the second Stealthberg from the deck, or the extra deck to the graveyard. 
That will then give you Rexroom with 2,000 life points, so that as soon as your opponent puts a monster on the board, you can activate Rexroom's effect, burn yourself down to 1,000 life points, and then it means basically anything of 1,000 uh, tap points or more is not going to be able to activate its effects. And then should you, like, you should be surviving that turn, your next turn is then going to be a, a Dragoon that can then go, cool, double pop and burn, plus 3k, 3k, and 3k there. So you're then just blowing your opponent out of the water. Uh, it's very techy. It's an interesting deck that I'm still working on. I just love the Dynamorphia kind of element of it. And I really like Dark Magician. So I thought, I'm going to put these two together and see how spicy this can be. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share. If you have any questions, like I said, please put them in the comments down below. I will be more than happy to answer them for you. With all of that out of the way, please stay safe. And as absolutely always, happy... Doolin!